Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I wanted to take a quick look at something that just turned up in the post. The Warhammer Quest Chaos Adversary Pack. Now, Warhammer Quest Silver Tower and Warhammer Quest Shadow, Shadows Over Hammerhole are, are fantastic games and I love them a lot and I play them a lot. Um, one of the biggest issues with those games is that the statistics, um, the stat lines and behavior tables for the monsters were all printed inside the quest books so when you're playing the game you've got to constantly keep flicking through the book now i resolved that by um photocopying every page of the book and laminating it and then getting a stand and having them out on display but they're big chunky a4 sized laminated sheets it's a bit unwieldy unruly um so when Games Workshop announced that they were going to release a Chaos Adversary pack which would have all of the stats for the Silver Tower monsters and the Shadows of a Hammerhole monsters but on conveniently sized cards plus cards for a whole bunch of new characters, uh, new monsters. Um, yeah, I was very excited about that and uh, it's just turned up in the post and I wanted to have a quick look. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the characters available in the pack or anything like that. It would take forever, but just want to have a quick, quick look at a few of them and um, and also talk about this product in general and what I hope it means. First of all, um, in fact, first of all, you'll notice um, it has just Warhammer Quest branding. It doesn't say Silver Tower. It doesn't say Shadows Over Hammerhole. Um, now that could potentially be just because it is a product that works with both games. Uh, you can use all of the monsters in this pack with Silver Tower, you can use them all with Shadows of a Hammerhole. Um, it's completely interchangeable, it's completely plug and play. Um, what I would like to hope it means is that they're going to now um, create Warhammer Quest as a brand and all those uh, Silver Tower has its own brand identity, and Shadows of a Hammerhole has a completely different, although it has the same Warhammer Quest branding. Um, everything in Shadows of a Hammerhole has a very distinct look, and everything in Silver Tower has more, um, more of a glorified chaotic theme to it. And when you smush everything together, like I have, um, it does look a little bit weird when some of your item cards look completely different to some of the other item cards and things like that. So um, I would like to hope that this is going to be an attempt to um, bring everything together under a, under a single brand um, style um, because it would be nice going forward um, if for them to continue supporting this this particular game system because it's a really good game system but to support it in a way that you know you can you can piece things together a little more easily um, and have everything look a little bit more cohesive on on the table that's my hope anyway um, it may just be, like I say, because you can use the cards with either game. The cards in question, um, you get uh, 12 followers of Sinch, uh, which is the uh, all the monsters from Silver Tower, 8 followers of Corn, 5 followers of Nurgle, uh, 4 Slaves to Darkness, 10 Skaven, 1 Grot Scuttlings, also from Silver Tower, and a Rules card. Um, and obviously, you will need a copy of Warhammer Quest Silver Tower or Warhammer Quest Shadows of a Hammerhole to use the contents of this set, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, this turned up in the post uh, a little while ago, and first thing I noticed was um, a lot bigger than I expected it to be. Um, you can, it's not going to be easy to tell on the video, but this is this is a hero card. Um, I was expecting the adversary cards to be the same size. Uh, they're not. They're considerably bigger and heavy. It's a heavy. It's a heavy wedge of cards. Um, and the other thing I noticed is printed in China. Um, Games Workshop still produce most of their stuff in the UK, but um, every now and again, certain products are, are turning up that are printed in China. Um, some of the Blood Bowl stuff was. Um, uh, yeah, there was a few other things that um, I know some of their scenery models are actually molded in China now as well. Um, I don't like that. Um, I just think, you know, Games Workshop's always been you know, keeping it um, production in the UK, and I've always liked that about them. That it's 
they've still managed to keep that that sense of, of keep keeping keeping it as a UK production. Um, but you know, it, it, it doesn't seem to have affected the quality at all. I mean, these cards are really quite lovely, um, and uh, and you know, if if that's if that's how they have to do it in order to produce these things that I guess maybe they think aren't going to sell in the same same quantities as their um, their Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigma stuff, then then so be it. If it means I get I get products I want, but there we go. So the cards are wedged in very very tightly. And uh, oh, look, on the top there's the Scott Grot 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 Scutlings, Scott Grotlings. Um, okay, so first of all, there, there's there's an instruction. There's an instruction sheet. This instruction sheet is the wordiest instruction sheet for for no reason at all. Um, it says it just says the cards and supplement allow you to use new adversaries um, in your games of Silver Silver Tower and Shadows over Hamaha. Um, but you you need citadel miniatures to represent them. Of course, they say you need citadel miniatures. What they mean is you need miniatures. Full stop. You can use any miniatures you want. You don't have to go out and buy the official things. But it's obviously it's, it's nice if you've got the official miniatures that match up with the cards. I've got quite a few Games Workshop miniatures, um, so I can automatically start. I can sift through this deck of cards and, and pick out the ones that I've already got the models for, and that's quite handy. Um, it then goes on to talk about exotic adversaries, which they've already explained the exotic adversary rules in in the games. Um, and then there's this new concept of mighty adversaries. There's a great big wedge of text here, which basically says mighty adversaries are exotic adversaries, except you can only use them once per dungeon. Um, yeah, because they're, they're a lot tougher. They're, they're, hero, they're hero level monsters, and they usually come with an entourage as well. Um, but yeah, that, other than that, they're just exotic adversaries again. Um, and then there's actually a paragraph where they tell you that instead of picking your exotic adversaries, why not shuffle the cards and pick one at random? Thanks, Games Workshop. I never would have figured that kind of thing out for myself if you hadn't have put in a big paragraph of text explaining it. Yeah, it, it's you know it's nice that they've gone to the to the level. To, to explain exactly how to incorporate them, leaving no margin for error or interpretation, but I don't think it was necessarily, necessarily necessary. Um, so yeah, um, cards in question, we'll, we'll look at the, the grots. Um, they've now got a picture of the model. Um, there's no there's no artwork on any of these, it's all pictures of the models. Um, stat line, um, rules uh, in terms of what sort of weapons and things they have and then the behavior table is on the reverse and at this size you know if you've got multiple um monster groups on the table at once it's quite quite convenient to have a couple of these out on the table and just to keep looking front and back i think doing doing it front and back i mean it's not obviously not as convenient as having everything on the same size on the same size but um it keeps the size of the card down and i don't really have a problem with that um it has more of a hammer howl look on the cards than obviously silver tower but it is definitely a sort of more generic look and so i do hope i do hope that that we can see future products in the line with a more homogenized um style that would be nice um okay so i'm just gonna flick through so these, sorry if any glare comes out on these. Um, so all of these are from Silver Tower. Um, that's one of the ones that's sort of printed in the back of the uh, of the quest book. Ogroid, Acolytes, Sangors, Skyfires. Um, I believe those were exclusively available in White Dwarf until now. So. Um, so that's quite nice that they've introduced those ones that they, they printed in White Dwarf magazine. Um, yeah, so the, the the Enlightened and the Skyfires, I think they were, were, um, were exclusive White Dwarf rules at the time of publication. They were the ones that, um, when they came out, um, they came out before Shadows of a Hammerhall came out and they let slip in the rules. It said um, the Games Master can decide. Um, and that's how I knew that um, Shadows of a Hammerhall was going to be Games Master led rather than a cooperative experience um, because I am a detective. Screamers, Flamers, yeah so we've seen all these things before if you've seen Silver Tower and I have miniatures for all of those. Um, 
all of the exotic adversaries is actually a sort of getting started with Thinch box set, um, which has all of those miniatures in it. You can buy that, um, I think it's 50, 50 pounds with, and then you can get twenty percent sort of off online, and um, and you can have pretty much all of those exotic adversaries to play with if, if, in one in one purchase, which is great. Um, this was interesting. Um, they've in, they've put in the card for the familiars. Familiars were something that was kind of um, special to Silver Tower because they've got their own, own rules. But um, Games Workshop have actually gone the extra extra mile and they've rewritten the rules for the Chaos Familiars. Um, so they're not um, spawned based on um, the Fate die rolls anymore. Um, you can set them up uh, as an exotic adversary. Um, and they've modified the rules slightly. They still basically do the same thing, but exactly where you position them on the board is different. I think um, Tweak used to gravitate towards the hero, uh, the monster with the most vigor or something. Um, but now um, he he appears at a portal next to the that is closest to a hero, things like that. So very minor rule changes, but it just means that you can actually use them in in Hammerhall if you want to. Um, I'm not sure why I would ever just summon a familiar as an exotic adversary group um, I would need to already have a lot of monsters on the board and be in quite a strong position to say I'll, I'll pick a chaos familiar rather than a horde of bloodthirsty corn warriors for example but it's nice to have that option isn't it um, and if you're doing your own homebrew quests or whatever um, then you know you've got all the all the rules in one place chaos sorcerer lord um, I purchased the Lord of Chaos miniature because I was going to use him as my hero of choice in Silver Tower, and I haven't had a lot of uh, time to use him uh, yet. But so it's nice to have have a model for him. Um, the only problem with him is um, he's a mighty adversary that has an entourage um, uh, of D6 Chaos Warriors, so you need to buy or, or have access to some Chaos Warriors um, in order to bring him into play. But I mean, if you've got like a uh, Stormcast Eternal Army or something, you could use a bunch of those guys to stand in as Chaos Warriors or something. Um, obviously here is the card for the Chaos Warriors. Chaos Warriors um, are particularly fun because they, they get an armor save roll. Um, not many monsters in Silver, Ta in, in Silver Tower or Shadows of Hammerhall have, um, in fact I don't think any of them do. Um, off the top of my head I can't remember. But um, yeah, um, 2d6 Warriors, a maximum of 10 on the board. Or with a six plus armor save, um, that's quite quite scary for the heroes, um, especially when you're looking at um, they've got attacks like the Chaos Great Blade. They're rolling two dice, hitting on four plus, causing two wounds each. Um, you know that's going to put some hurt on on the uh, on the heroes. Um, it should be noted, um, yeah, Lord of Chaos is one of the mighty adversaries, um, so he would be one of the ones that only appears once per dungeon, but. He has some absolutely brutal attacks. There's two dice hitting on two plus, causing two damage per hit. Um, that's like a, that's almost an instant death. I mean, that's, that's that's crippling a hero instantly. So some of these some of these monsters are quite tough. Chaos Marauders. Chaos Marauders are due an update. Games Workshop get some new Chaos Marauder miniatures because they're ruddy ugly. Um, Slaughter Priest this is quite fun. Um, we've got the Slaughter Priest and a Skull Grinder and the Aspiring Deathbringer. And for anybody who plays the Games Workshop game Gore Chosen, those guys will look very familiar. So um, we already have character cards for these guys for use as heroes. And now we have them for for um, mighty adversaries as well. So that's really good. So if you've got Gore Chosen, um, you've got a great game in its own right. But you've also got a set of characters that you can use as heroes in Silver Tower or Shadows of a Hammer. Um, and you've also got a, a set of characters that you can use as mighty adversaries. So, you know, you're really getting a lot of utility out of each miniature here, which is great. Um, and then there's Blood Reavers that we've seen in Hammerhall, Blood Warriors... Um, and yeah, it's there's a lot of lot of a lot of guys, a lot of monsters, skull reapers and wrath mongers and blood letters. Um, and then there's also because Skaven are classed as chaos now. Um, there's a bunch of Skaven stuff. So you've got the Skaven Warlord. Um, there's already a Skaven Warlord hero 
um, and a Skaven Gracia hero, and now we have villainous versions, which is great. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. There's pack masters and, and rat ogres. Anybody who owns the Spire of Dawn starter set for Age of Sigmar is going to be laughing because they've got a great big wedge of ratty goodness that they can drop straight into their games of Warhammer Quest, which is very good. Um, unfortunately, uh, Spire of Dawn isn't available anymore. It's been discontinued, and I don't think it's going to be coming back. Shame, because I didn't pick up a copy. Clan Rants. In fact, that could well be a model from... Um, Spire of Dawn, it looks like him. Storm Vermin. Big rat dudes. Uh, and Plague Monks. Obviously, Skaven turn up in big quantities, 2d6 of them. Um, with their swarmy tactics and general nastiness. Don't rats. So, yeah. This is something I'm particularly happy to see, Lord of Plagues. Um, when Shadows of a Hammerhall came out, um, it had sort of some Nurgle bad guys and it had some Blight Lords. And I said at the time that it, it was a missed opportunity not having a Lord of Plagues villain in there. It would have been really nice to have that. And, and now we do. Um, the Lord of Plagues is there and he turns up with D3 Putrid Blight King. So anybody who has Shadows of a Hammerhall already has his entourage as well, which is really good. Um, so very happy to see him. Herald of Nurgle. There's a there's a start collecting Nurgle box set which actually has a Herald of Nurgle and it also has plague bearers and Nurglings. So there is a way to get a good chunk of these characters as well for a relatively small buy-in. And there we go. And there's the Grots again. Um, I said I wasn't going to flick through them all, um, but I did anyway. But what I didn't do is um, look in any great detail on, on stats and abilities and things. I think that's something um, for the brave adventurers to find out for themselves. But overall, um, a really good product, really nice quality. Um, nice quality card, um, nicely printed, very crisp and clean. Um, rules for all of the monsters we've already seen, a whole bunch of new stuff. And um, yeah, this is a good sign that they're going to continue um, supporting the franchise supporting that brand of Warhammer Quest and I hope to see a lot more of this stuff. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.